Hi, I'm Dr. James Doughton, Professor of Business at Middlesex Community College at the Lowell City Campus in Lowell, Massachusetts. Today we will have uh, the great opportunity to view student scholars' research work. Why don't we take this time to um, sit back and relax and see what they have presented from a term of research that they have gathered. Thank you. Uh, my name is Kyle Pamphlo, and I'll be talking about advances in music technologies. All right, so before we were able to listen to our own music, what do we have to do? We had to sit there in front of the musician and just listen to the music. But now, thanks to technology, we can listen to our own personal music whenever we want. But we're going to start from the beginning. The phonograph. It was invented by Thomas Edison in 1877. It was actually created kind of by accident because he was working on the telegraph and the telephone and that somehow he came up with that. Um, it uses uh, wax cylinders. A needle runs through the wax cylinders and reads the ridges and the, um, the sound is amplified through that cone right there. And the wax cylinders were they were easily mass produced, and that's why they were very popular. But unfortunately, they would wear they would wear down after like a hundred uses. And the uh, if you wanted a cylinder that was longer than say like ten minutes, you'd have to buy a whole new phonograph that could hold the bigger uh, cylinder. So it got really expensive. And um, the cylinders would also get dirty, and it would not sound that great. But that's why we moved on to the record player or the turntable, either or. First, it used uh, rubber discs that, all, that looked like regular records, that looked like vinyl, but they were rubber. And they also wore down easily. And those used um, 78 RPMs, which means RPMs are rotations per minute. So that means the needle was going around so fast that it would wear the record down and you'd have to keep buying the same record over and over again. But because they made vinyl, vinyl is cheaper and easier to mass produce. And uh, the four, they came out with 45s and 33s. 45s are the singles where you have one track on one side and another track on the other. And the 33s were the whole albums, the big ones. And then um, they had to update the pavilions. And nowadays, the pavilion is the cone on top. And nowadays, the records players look like that. That's the one I have. Um, you, now, you, instead of the sound amplified out of the cone, you have an amplifier, and then it goes to the speakers, and that's how you hear it. Eight track, Outdate, out, outdated technology. <laughs> All right. It first appeared in the 60s. Um, it was the first portable audio format that you could physically just like bring anywhere and like throw in a car. It was very popular in, the car, in cars in the 60s and 70s. Um, it's notorious for uh, bad sound quality. The, um, the, the uh, strips, the magnetic strips that it would read would wear out easily. And it got replaced quickly by the cassette tape. The cassette tape was more portable and it had better sound quality than the 8-track. And the, magne the magnetic strip was better. But because of the Walkman, it boomed in popularity because you could just walk around wherever you wanted and those, that's the music that you want. You don't have to listen to someone else. You don't have to listen to the radio, listen to something you don't want to hear. Like, that's what you want to hear. You have the Walkman, you buy the cassette tape, throw it in, you're all set. Compact disc player was introduced in 1982. It stemmed from laser discs, which is basically a big CD, like the size of a 33. It's huge. And um, this was great because the CDs don't wear out. There's no needle going along the ridges, and there's, there's no debris or anything can cause uh, uh, a discrepancy in the music. But one unfortunate thing is it can scratch outside, the CD can physically scratch outside of the player, and that can cause chirping noises and just the CD to crash in general. Now we have MP3s. It expanded with the growth of personal computers because you can take a CD, just rip it onto a computer, and then throw it onto an MP3 player. But the good thing about them, they're easily storable. They were mostly used in MP3 players, but they're used in many other devices now, like tablets, phones, and everything. The first MP3 player was that one next to the original iPod over there. It's called the AMP MP3 Playback Engine. It was. Uh, 
It came out in 1997. It's the first one that was portable, the first MP3 player that was portable. And then in 2000, the first phone, the Simmons SL45, that one down there next to the iPhone, that was the first phone that um, had MP3 playback and external storage. And that paved the way for like other phones saying, oh, it's not just a phone, like you couldn't do other things on these devices. A couple honorable mentions that I personally have never seen besides the mini disc down there. <laughs> but you have the RCA tape cartridge, which is up there. That's a regular tape. And then the RCA tape cartridge is that huge white one next to it. And then you have the uh, mini cassette next to that, which is tiny. I, I wish I had another picture like that for it. The one on the bottom is the, uh, is the eight track, the four track that came before the eight track, but that was that only lasted a couple of years, and then the mini disc came out in 1991 and just never took popularity because the uh, MP3s came out basically at the same time. 